Hi everyone, I'm just going to do a quick video showing you how to use Excel for two variable data. You can see here on the screen that I've got two variables. I've got on the first row time and on the bottom row I've got humidity. I'm just going to highlight them. It doesn't matter if the, you are across the page like this or down the page, it'll work both ways. Alright, we're going to insert a chart and it's a particular type of chart called a scatter plot. There it is there. Okay, and it shows one variable along the x-axis, that's time, and one variable up the y-axis, and that is humidity. You might want to add some chart elements and some titles. So go to axis titles, and along the primary horizontal, we could put in time in minutes. Just type and enter it. And then let's add also a vertical axis for humidity. No idea what the units are for humidity. And we could even put in a chart title if we wanted to, just by double clicking. Um, humidity after 9am, for instance. Okay, there's our chart. Now the really cool thing about Excel is that it predicts stuff for us. So click on one of these points and right click and go to Add Trend Line. And we get all these options, exponential, linear, logarithmic, polynomial, power and moving average. Now I'm going to do linear to start off with and you can see how it's already drawn a straight line which is a line of best fit. Scoot down the bottom and we're going to display the equation on the chart and display R squared as well. Alright, have a look at this line here. Y equals 1.4727x plus 20.6. So that gives us the equation of that straight line and we can use that to predict values. We could, for instance, predict the humidity at 6 minutes 30 seconds, for instance, or we could predict it at 12 minutes, all the way out here. Okay, so there's our straight line. Now, R squared, I'll tell you what that is. Let's go in here and see if I can get a pen. I do have a pen. What it does is it works out the distance that each of these points is away from the line, then squares those distances, to get rid of the pluses and minuses, and then divides by how many there are. So it's finding the average distance each of the points is from the line. We tend to use r instead of r squared, and that's just the square root there. All right, let's go out here and work out what that is. So I'm going to go equals sqrt brackets, what is it, 0 0.8767. So the square root, and r in this case, is 0.936323. Now, the closer that is to 1, the more perfect the relationship is. Okay, This is a positive line. You can see that it's going up as it goes to the right. If it was coming down like this, it would have a negative r, and the closer it was to negative 1, the more perfect the relationship. So it's a pretty strong relationship. Okay, there were a couple of other options for us. Let's colour these in again. And we're going to insert another scatter plot. I'll put this one over here. I won't worry with the titles this time. Click on the point, right click, add a trend line. And this time I'm going to do a polynomial, order 2. And that's a parabola. This means x squared. Scoot down the bottom, put in the equation and r squared. And there's our equation. See it's got an x squared there. And the r squared in this case is 0 0.9361. So that's actually a bit stronger. Let's find the square root. SQRT of 0 0.9361. Close the brackets. And see, it's a little bit stronger than this one. So a better relationship. The dots are closer on average to the dotted line. So there's two examples of putting in a trend line. And I know that you've got to do a third one, but I'll leave you to do something. And that's how to find R and also a little bit about how to interpret it.